Los Dias Gunners Collective TV. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack at it. Fire, 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 ba -da -ba -ba -ba. In a menudo style of direct fashion, we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate it. We're going up and it's all because of you. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to tell a little story. Story time. Buckle your seatbelt. Don't be a crash dummy, right? Because it's definitely going to be <laughs> a wild one. So um, I got to thinking the other day after several conversations. And, and I remember the story, man. Something that was crazy that happened. And it's unfortunate that it happened. But in prison, many, many, many things happen that don't quite get spoken on or the stories don't get revealed. But this one right here, this was some tricky dance move shit, right? This really happened. So now I did a, I did a video yesterday about the woods, brother, right? And the white dudes are crazy. And like I said in that video, man, they are known to lay a demo down. And what I mean by that is when they do something, when they take the necessary action that they feel they, they have to, it's a very vicious situation, man. It becomes very bloody, very... Um, everybody knows what happened. They make it a point in case to let everybody know this is their get down. Very treacherous group, right? Um, they don't just do something without vetting it and making sure that it's supposed to be done. And when they get it done, um, they make sure it's done right. You know, by anyone that doesn't understand that, I mean, if they're going to whack someone and remove them off the yard... It's not going to be just a couple pokes and a slash. It's going to be damn near severing a motherfucker's head off. That's just what they do. So anyways, in this case, there was a younger white guy that was doing, I think, 24 months or maybe three years, 36 months. Um, didn't have much time to do, but was embraced. He was part of the group. He was just a wood. He wasn't a skin. And, uh, you know, from the point in time that I was there with him on this particular yard, it seemed like he was one of the fellas. You know, seemed like he was drinking coffee, brother, right? He was good. Um, didn't get in the mix, wasn't a gambling guy, but did have a heavy drug addiction, right? And that's one of the key things that you cannot have in prison whatsoever, man. If you ain't got it like that, don't try to get it like that because it ain't going to happen. I've noticed that drug debts are probably one of the most leading causes of a person getting uh, uh, removed off a yard, whacked. Um, deemed no good by their group. And that goes for every different group, whether you're Southsider, Northaniel, Bulldog, White, Black. You know, if you find yourself uh, dipping into that cookie jar, homie, and you don't, and you ain't got no milk to drink it with, um, you're going to have a raspy throat, right? And they're going to make sure that they cut that motherfucker. So this guy had been building up a drug debt. And for the most part, he was paying his debt, um, but his lady fell off. So when his lady fell off, Pop goes the weasel. There goes the money, right? And there's a lot of guys that are very dependent upon a woman while incarcerated or their family to look out for them. And they make a lot of promises. You know, there's a lot of people that use that Chicano Express card. Eh? They use credit. So they'll get fronted something. And if they're smart, they're out there trying to get off a few papers, man, so that they can get them a little paper, right? But guys get so high and so fucked up that they forget who they owe, what they owe. Um, and it becomes a, a thing where they just get behind. And once you get behind in prison, then someone's going to try to get behind you. Make a like a high, make a high knee hoe, right? Or they're going to make you a hoe. So in this case, this guy, you know, for, for a large amount of his time, he was being involved in drugs. He got right into the mix. And you wouldn't notice, man, you would see him high laughing with other woods on the yard or whatever. But that's just their get down, man. You know, to each group their own. Some groups are allowed to uh, indulge in hard drugs, whereas some groups weren't. We were not. You know, bottles be envious too, looking over there like, damn, number woods, let me hide them up. I bet that's just some good shit, right? Um, but drugs, in any case, especially in an environment of prison, is probably the worst thing you can involve yourself in because it fucks your mind up. You're not up on game. You're not aware of what's going on around you. And believe me, there's a lot of shit going on in prison that you got to stay aware of. Because, A, being aware can be the difference between life or death, especially when you're incarcerated in the California system. Being aware is one of the main things. That's why Norteños had postes and people always watching. Sureños the same way. The same way because at the end of the day, man, if your people, um, if you 
put out there that you're going to defend your household, defend your people, then you better do that. And that doesn't only mean picking up arms. That also means participating in any other program, which means keeping point, keeping post, making sure that the canine's not involved in your business and that other groups aren't potentially a, a risk of being a, a threat. So anyways, this guy was high all the time. It is what it is, right? So he gets behind on his bill after his lady leaves him. And, uh, you know, he starts doing the, what a lot of people done. And I've seen it happen in prison many times. People will start procrastinating and giving stories. Well, don't trip, bro. I got money coming in two weeks. My package is going to hit. I got you on my package. Don't trip. Home, send me this and that. And I, I'll, hey, I'll have it wired out to you or whatever he, drag he was running on his own people. And the debt was within his own car. It wasn't like he was buying outside of his race or outside of his ethnicity. That's not highly encouraged because that right there can get everybody in a wreck. But if it's a white thing, hey, well, mighty whitey, brother, it's just a white thing. If it's a brown thing, it's a brown thing. So nobody else is going to get involved in anyone's business if it doesn't concern them. That's one thing I appreciate about prison is everybody lets everyone else handle their own business until it becomes where it's cost effective. If it affects your shit, then that's where you have groups have melees and riots and things of that nature. So anyways, this guy was in debt within his own car um, with some pretty high powered individuals. You know, whoever had the Yavez in that fucking yard, whoever had the keys wasn't no joke. And I remember this Volta was uh, pretty quiet, pretty big, pretty vicious, right? He had a reputation that preceded him, meaning that he had been in other prisons and uh, Volta's got chopped up all along the way. He was on his Freddy Krueger shit, right? So when he gets to this yard, um, he's putting everybody in debt, keeping everybody in pocket. That's usually what dudes do, man. If they got it like that, they got the connect, they got status, then they're going to keep everyone around them happy, high, and uh, in pocket. So anyways, this youngster got in pocket. Now, his date was coming up to get out. So he was right around the corner again now. So his procrastinating was catching up to him. Meaning people started looking because what at one point he'd be like, hey, don't trip, homes. I got you, man. Hey, my chick's going to get back on. I'm working her on the phone. I know, I know, I know. You know what I mean? Can I get another pill? Can I get another Neurotin? Right? Can I get a Nana? Um, and then at the end of the day, he was still getting papers from other people. He even tried to go to other races to get it, man. Um, but they were already aware, man, nah, this Vothel fucking, he's now becoming a dope fiend on the yard. Once a person turns from just a regular fucking uh, a, a recreational user into a dope fiend on the yard, basically a base head on that yarda, nobody wants to fuck with him, man. He's kind of ostracized and people keep their distance because he's going to do base head tactics. See, just because you're not on the streets doesn't mean those tactics don't happen in prison. You'll have Vothels that are trying to work people out of the, okay, look at, look, bro. I'll get three sopas tomorrow for two sopas today. They're just trying to hustle, right? Um, so nobody wanted anything to do with this guy. And as people started to feel a certain way because other races were going up to the whites telling them, hey, man, your homeboy, I don't know what's up with him, homie, even though everyone did, right? Um, prison's a small environment. Everybody knows pretty much everybody's business. But they went up to him and they were like, hey, homie. And it was Southerners. They went up to the whites and they were like, hey, bro, your homeboy tried to come at us um, with some drag, eh, and try to get a little front, but... uh." It ain't going to happen, you know? Uh, we could already see fucking he's showing doping characteristics on this yard. So they were feeling fucking embarrassed, Humps. They were feeling some type of way, so they started plotting, right? And that's the worst thing that could happen in prison is you don't want Vatos to fucking plot on you. Because once they start plotting on you, it's a, it's a wrap. It's over. You know, your career is done. Um, hopefully you make it on two legs, but probably not. Dealing with the, the woods, the white boys, the skins especially, <laughs> they're going to fucking chop your toenails down, homie. Period. So anyways, this guy would be getting all high and asking everybody for more dope. Meanwhile, he was bragging to everybody on the yard that his date was coming up. He was going to be getting out. He even made promises to these individuals, this high power individual that he would take care of him once he got out. We all know that's pillow talk. That's bullshit. There's so many people that make promises, homes, and only real ones and very few percentage of people take care of their debt, man, or really look out. And you have to be a very well-respected and trusted individual to get that love. You know, I've seen Vatos. Now, it's different if you get moved off a yard to a different facility. It's not your fault. You didn't ride a fucking kite, nothing. They just come snatch you up or you get involved. Something happens on the yard, uh, a racial thing or whatever, and you get involved and you go to the shoe or the oil. Then some guys will chalk it up to the game. Some guys will reach out to their homeboys on that yard that you hit and be like, hey, this Vato owes me, man. There's no escaping it. That's the thing. When you're in debt in prison, there's no escaping it. I still owe a motherfucker a couple pairs of socks from a package. You know what I mean? And he's probably sweating me for them. And we've both been out for years, right? That's just how how real it is. It ain't even the, the monetary part of it. It's more so the principle. 
There's principalities in this shit, right? Just like the dope game, man. Hey, $30 can ruin a friendship. I've seen it happen many times. You know, you look out for someone, try to put them in pocket homes, and then they start trying to take out of yours. It ain't cool. So anyways, um, this guy's telling all these people, bragging about his date coming up, and then he had made this promise, hey, I'll take care of you when I get out. After making several promises to the same guy, oh, I got you on this package. I got you on that package. There was never no package. So now, not only is he in debt with the man, the guy who's running that yard, but he starts to get in debt with other, you know, woods around him. And everybody's sweating him. And some guys are sweating him a little bit more than others. So, of course, the big guy starts to plot and plan. He's saying there's no way that this guy is going to make it to the streets without being touched on a little bit. You know, not in a sexual fashion, but in a vicious fashion, right? So this is what happened. It comes to the day this guy's getting out. Or actually, it was the day prior to him getting out. So <clears throat> what happens usually right before you get out, 90 days before you get out of prison, usually they take your job from you. Um, you can't go to work. Uh, they start to do your parole packet. You get your fucking parole clothing sent in. I mean, they start to take you, will, working with the counselor to, you know, they, you need to let them know where you're going to parole to, give them an address um, so they can give you the rules and regulations, who to be around, where to check into your parole officer, all this shit, right? It's, it's called doing your parole package. Just your 90 days before you get out. It happens with everyone. And you, those are the fucking longest 90 days of your incarceration. Ask anyone who's ever done time. You're, you're looking at that clock. You're clock watching like a motherfucker, stressing, right? So when the days come, when it's about a week left, you know, any debt that you have, uh, any homeboys that you want to say goodbye to, you usually go out to the yard and do that. You know, the day before you parole or even the week before you look out on the yard, whatever your property you have, you know, you shoot your TV, your boom box, your CL20 headphones, um, whatever you have to the homies. You look out for your people. You know, if you're in debt, then hey, a Avato will gladly take another TV. It's just the way it is. This guy didn't have any of that. He had already clucked most of his shit off. And I know his people were feeling some type of way because, you know, you look forward to a homeboy getting out. Not only because he's going to get out and do some things for himself and hopefully for the gente, but at the same time, um, it's just a good thing to see a brother get out, right? Um, doesn't matter what group you're from. Everyone's happy for you. There are some people that are envious in the background. They're like, fuck this dude. I got life, homie. You don't deserve it. I deserve it. Um, but they're not going to voice that. You know, they're going to shake your vice and be like, hey, bro, do good out there. Don't let me see you come back. Um, they'll be back on a violation in Tracy. It's just, it happens. So anyways, this guy clucked everything off. So he has nothing to give. So trip out. The day before the day he gets out, um, they throw a spread. So they throw a lightweight little spread. And I remember, man, these white dudes hooked it up, man. I was like, damn, I didn't know white guys. I knew they, I knew they know how to make meatloaf and shit, but damn. Right? They hooked it up some stir fry. So they made, or sweet and sour, excuse me. So they made their little sweet and sour with the Kool-Aid packs, all that. You know the recipe. If you don't, I'll do it on one of my other channels one day. So anyways, they do the little sweet and sour thing. They're making little burritos and eating good. And I thought, okay, maybe all is forgiven. Because I knew just like everyone else that this guy was a fucking a baboso. He was running around the yard like a poop butt, right? But I thought maybe whatever he told his friends or whatever, they weren't tripping on it. It was what it was. Like I said, he was a youngster. He didn't have no status, wasn't affiliated, you know, into a prison gang. He was just a regular wood trying to get by. It wasn't all tatted down. It was just like, if, if you met him on the streets tomorrow, you would think he was just a regular white dude. Only he'd walk funny after this, after what happened to him. So they're kicking back. They bust their spread. They're doing their thing, man. Um, it's fucking nighttime, right? The nighttime comes. It's all good in the hood. You don't hear no funny fucking, no screaming or nothing. It's whatever. I'm not really paying attention. I'm aware of how many white guys, you know, I've done my count, but I'm not tripping on what they're doing. So now it's the next day. So he's going to be getting out the next day. So that was, I guess, two days before. So now it's the next day on the yard. And I see the white guys grouped up on the yard having a junta, a meeting. And I tell my homeboy, I'm like, hey, bro, you know what I mean? Because I'm on post, so I'm actually doing count. That's what Norteños do, man. We count all the opposition on the yard. It's hard to do sometimes. But you got to count because you got to go back, write an OTR, man, an off-tier report. Let everyone know, you know, what you've seen. How many fucking opposition were there? How many Southsiders? How many fucking Blacks? How many Crips? Bloods? How many fucking uh, Woods? Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? If Baltas went to the program office, who did it? Um, anything. If Baltas went to medical, what time they left, when they returned. Everything is reported because one little thing like that, um, one little chink in the armor, one little difference can make the difference. If you understand what I'm saying. It's just a very structured group as a Northennial. There's a lot of things that you will become involved in. Whether you like it or not, homes. And if you don't, well, then there's going to be other shit sa, 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 that you don't like. So anyways, um, I we go back to the building. This dude's in my building. 
And I notice he's in his cell and there's several white dudes coming in and out of his cell. Now, Vatos will do that when they pop the doors. You know, I've seen Vatos go in there because they're doing cat work. Or I've actually seen dudes, and this has happened in this case, they'll go, they'll switch cells. So they're like, your celly will go in another cell so he can get worked on, tatted on. And he'll go over here. Or if they want to drink pruno or slam together, or whatever they're going to do is last shit going on in prison. They do that all the time. Every group does that, man. Like, hey, bro. You know, on unlock, come to my cell. My cellie would go over there and chill with you for the night. Just say chill with their boy for the night or whatever. Um, so I'm noticing every unlock, different white guys going in, but I'm not noticing that young dude come out. Okay. So basically what they were doing, man, was all these different dudes that he owed money or all these different dudes. There was even Vatos coming from the yard into the building, you know, because you could do that when they do unlock to do yard release. People will run up into other buildings Hopefully, they don't get discovered by the placas. Most of the time, the cops know everybody on that building, right? Or they, you know, they're familiar with them. But there's vaultas that would go wiggle, you know what I'm saying? Walk with their fucking you know, laundry bag, go up the stairs, go to full cell. So they were doing it. What they were doing, man, to this guy, e pobre, see. There was vaultas in there doing bad things to him, right? Medieval. They had this vaulta tied up to his bunk, and they were beating him, man. And there was probably about six or seven different individuals that went in the cell that were smashing this dude. I mean, bad, right? And you would think, and every time it was count time, they were making him, the, his cellie was telling him, shut the fuck up, man. Get under the blankets, man, and act like nothing, man. If you try to scream out or anything, I'm going to kill you, right? Um, and this dude was doing that. And every unlock for the whole rest of that day, Valtos were going in there smashing him, right? Um, eventually, it was the next day, Right? And uh, they didn't kill him or nothing like that, man. But they were hey, they were cutting on him with razors. They were doing all kinds of bad shit. So it's the day of parole. Now, the day of parole, they come and get you. It just depends on what prison you're in. But most of the time, they come get you about 4 or 5 in the morning. Early, right? 6, the latest. They want to get you before the you know, shit starts popping. Before pill call. Before chow. You know, the only ones that are up are workers. You'll notice, like, the workers that get up, they'll be going to the kitchen all tired and shit. Fuck, hey, right? Because they got to make breakfast, get it prepared and ready. Or there'll be vatos that fucking work. Whatever they work. Grounds crew. Whatever. Um, but usually it's the guys that work in the kitchen are the very first people up in prison. Because um, they got to get comida ready. So anyways, fucking uh, right before them or even during them is when they'll, you know, guys that are paroling, they'll come. The cops will come knock on your cell and be like, hey, you ready to go? And you're ready. Usually you're at the fucking, you got your cell like this. All sweaty because you worked out. If you're a real one, you bust it down first thing in the morning and already bird bath. You and your celly. Because he's, you're all hype. You haven't slept all night, right? I know. I've paroled a few times. That's usually how it goes. This di dude ain't doing none of that. This dude is on the verge of almost dying, man. He had internal bleeding. So he was bleeding out. And his celly knew what time it was. Didn't give a fuck, right? And was a lifer. Whatever, man. This guy was going to pay his debt one way or the other. So when the cops come to his cell, um, they're knocking on his door. His celly gets up and he tells his celly. He was on the top bunk. His celly tells his celly, hey. It's time to go. And the cops are already tripping. Like, why isn't this guy ready? Is he a fucking dolphin? What's going on? Yeah, he was, right? What's going on with them? Um, and so the cellie's like, hit your lights, right? So when the guy turns on the fucking little overhead light and they see this dude's face, this fucker's face, I've never... So the only comparison I could say is I seen a video on YouTube one time where this guy... I don't know if you guys have seen the video where he went to court and they put like a mask on him and his eyes were fucking shut because of what they did to him. Um, the cops did to him, right? And... Uh, and the family freaked out and shit. It was like that. You know, so the cops like, oh shit, get against the wall, right? Tells the celly. And they go in there about three deep, the cops, and they snatch this guy up. He can't walk. Man, they broke both his legs, his kneecaps. They broke his kneecaps. His shit was all swollen shut. And they're like, who did this to you? And they're telling him, so they're cuffing his celly, taking his celly out immediately. Tad Seg, his celly's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I didn't know he was like that, right? Of course, sticking to the grind. And uh, they're dragging this foot. They come in, nurses, everything. Now all the lights are on. Everyone's up being nosy, right? And I remember seeing when they brought this dude out and his face was so fucking swollen. looked like he got stung by a whole bunch of wasps, which he did. They were white wasps, right? Um, and that was that. The demo was laid, man. The day of his parole, man. You know? And this was the thing. I was wondering, like, how the fuck did this happen? Well, this is what happened. They got him smacked back. They got him so high and so fucked up that... He didn't know really what was going on. You know, they were like, okay, you want to be a dope fiend and you want to get high and burn us? You want to play games, man? We're going to get you hella high, bro. To the, I think they were trying to hit him with the hot shot, right? To get him to fucking be gone. 
But that didn't happen. He lived through all that, man. And they did horrible things to him. Like I said, I can't tell you the details because of YouTube. But also, I can't. Uh, I wasn't in that cell, right? I only can tell you what I heard. But I remember everybody was talking about it at, you know, because what they did was they slammed us at Chow. We didn't go to Chow, our building. Other buildings went. Our buildings didn't, right? Because they knew it was kind of internal. They thought his celly did it to him for the longest. And I'm sure his celly did participate. Um, dude didn't snitch, though. He ended up paroling. He paroled. This is true story. That fool fucking paroled straight to the hospital in the area. They drove him in a van, not to his old lady and to his, well, his old lady left him. Not to his family, but straight to a hospital, man. You know, that goes to show you right there, youngsters, don't get involved in drugs in prison, man. Don't, 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 you know, unless you can handle your business, you're a weekend warrior and you got it like that. All right, finally, do your thing. But if you can't, that's exactly what they did to that man. And nobody besides the Selly got snatched up. Selly took the whole rap, ended up catching a shoe term, was gone, right? Everyone else, party time, you know, party time all the time. And that's just what it was. So, um, yeah, that was crazy, man. They got them all fucked up and did bad things to him. That's because he owed a debt. Now, I've seen dudes, true stories. I've seen dudes owe debts, tell people, hey, don't trip. As soon as I get out, hey, I got you. And they're giving that love like, all right, cool. And they don't do it, right? They don't do it. And guess what happens? They find themselves back incarcerated a month later, all spun out because they got on one as soon as they got out. And they get whacked, you know, because like I said, everything follows you. You know, um, let me tell you about a situation with me. True story, right? So there was a cat from the Bay. From the Bay. He wasn't a cool me. He was a white boy, right? He was cool, though. He, he fucked with the Bay tough. And, uh, you know, one of them dudes, they would say tries to act black. But, you know, to me, there is no trying to act nothing. You just are what you are. He hung around with the brothers. He was accepted. Tall dude. Cool. So this one was balling out of control. He used to get packages left and right. We were in the gym, three yard. And, uh, man, he would have like four or five different people getting packages in his name. And then he'd hook you up like $20, $30 of whatever you wanted. Right. So I wasn't going to get a package because I was a broke dick ass motherfucker. Right. Um, I was a hustler. Whatever money I got because I hustled. So at this particular time, I was doing bad and he was cool with the North Daniels. He was cool. So he was like, hey, bro, he's like, hey, uh, you got a package coming this semester or this fucking, uh, you know, quarter. And I was like, nah, I don't, bro. And he was like, hey, I'll shoot you a little 35, whatever you want, bro. Package shit. You know, if you if you hook me up, you know, get a package in my name. I said, yeah, I got you, bro. So, bam, we filled it out. Everything was good. We're waiting on the package. It was taking a little while. It was a walking horse package. They, they take forever. That's the high class shit. People know you can get uh, secure packs, fucking, uh, 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 what's the other ones? Fucking act all access and, and union supply and all the different ones. Right. But walking horse is the shit. It's the rich man's package. You know, he was balling. So his packages are starting to come in. So he's like, Hey, did, he, did it hit yet? I'm like, nah. So it's going to come any day. I know it's coming. Right. So I'm like, yeah, I got you, bro. As soon as it comes, it's good. And I was, I was meaning to give it to him because you know, he was a homie. He was cool. You know, I fucked with him all the time, man. He, Hey, he always gave me frowls. He was just a cool ass dude. Um, everyone respected him and I seen him put hands on a couple people. I mean, he was just a good dude. So I'm not tripping like that. I'm waiting. And, um, what happens is this brother was there, man, and he was gambling with one of the homies and they got into, they got into a verbal confrontation. So there was kind of like some friction there, but I was still going to hook homeboy up like that. Nah, there's no doubt. That ain't, that doesn't involve all of us, but we're cool. That was just them two. And, um, there was a podium and you would get your razors and shit. So they'd say razors. And you trade out your old razor for new ones, right? And so I'm in line. And this brother thought, because I was behind him, that we were going to fucking get off on him. But I wasn't even tripping off his little argument with the homie. It was what it was. They can handle their shit, right? I mean, it wasn't that serious. It was a few words, right? Nothing really crazy. And this motherfucker felt, I don't know, man, how he felt. And he just turned around and stole on me. Bah! Knocked me out. Facts, right? Put me on my pockets, man. I didn't see it coming. I didn't even know what was going on. I just woke up like, damn, what the fuck, right? They snatched me up, snatched him up, um, got us for a fucking uh, a fight, even though I didn't even know what the fuck happened, right? Text me, take me to the hole. So now I'm in the hole, and they move me to another yard, right? And they, they keep the brother in the hole. They move me to the other yard. And I want to go back because that's, you know, I was used to that yard. That's the gym. That's, that was where the homies are at. So I forgot all about the package. I'm not thinking about it, right? So next thing you know, I go to, I'm on the, this new yards, whatever. I got to be there, right? It's right over the fence. Um, and fucking, I get the package hits, right? And there's no way I can get volatile shit to them. You know, there's no way. I try to tell a cop, hey, can you take this to this? They're like, hell no, nah, they ain't doing it, right? So 
he used to work in the kitchen and he's hollering at people like, tell that fool to come work in the kitchen. So I go to work in the kitchen and we worked where there was like a wall, man. They were, he was preparing the sack lunches and I worked like the chow line, right? So he's like, hey, bro. He tells me through the door, you know, he's like, hey, what's well, so up my package, fool? And I was like, he's like, don't, don't do me dirty. I said, oh, no, I ain't like that, bro. I said, hey, uh, but I'm going to have to hit you with some money or something. But I ain't got money like that, bro. And so he was like, oh, no, nah, bro, I ain't going out like that. You're trying to burn me. I said, no, nah, for reals, bro. Like, I don't know what to do. I mean, I wasn't trying to burn him, right? But he starts getting high power talk. She's so saying, you know, fuck you then. What the? La primera lives, right? Now I'm going to use that fucking speed stick, eh? And what, right? Shit, I'm going to tell you, and what? Whole bunch of brothers got at me on the yard like, hey, the homie said you owe him some money. I said, look, the homie. And I explained the situation to him. And this is what they said. They said, well, that's his business, man. He's got to get off where he's mad at. And um, this is real shit, right? I never ran into that dude, but I knew his name because of the package. I had all that, you know, that comes with like a little paper says everything you order. And so I knew what it was, right? So because he ordered it out of his own funds. So I already knew, man. So I get out about six months later, man. And it's on my mind. The whole time it was on my mind, I'm watching my back like, damn, are these brothers going to get at me because of him? And so first thing I did as soon as I got out, man, with my gate money, real one, right? Went and flipped some shit a week later, man. I sent that for a package. Real talk, man. That's what real ones do. Anyways, true stories, facts. With that being said, man, watch the drug game, man. It's vicious in prison. Move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, man, this is all entertainment, man. I'm keeping, I'm keeping it real. No added preservatives. Giving you knowledge you can't get in college. And trying to dissuade you, man, from going in there and acting a fool and becoming that fool. You know what it is. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, and strive for what I truly believe in. And that's bringing you the best possible content I can. And unity for the hand Black, brown, and the woods, brother. Step your game up. Bang, bang.